currently reading the third book in the Playing for Keep series. I've read the first two books and I believe I rated them both three stars. This one I think I might rate higher only because um, it's a single parent romance and I'm very excited. So this is what it looks like. It's called Unravel Me. You can see. Me. Can you kind of see it? Um, I am 24% into the book and I'm really enjoying it. We're following around um, two perspectives. We follow around Adam who is a hockey player and he and his girlfriend, longtime girlfriend, broke up at least a year ago and she was trash. He walked in on her cheating on him and he hasn't been the same since. He's been trying to date people because he seems like the type of person who actually wants to settle down and um, he doesn't want to like hook up with anybody like that. So he hasn't had sex in, in, since they broke up. Um, but he is a proud dog owner uh, a little not a little a big fluffy dog named bear and one morning he runs into our other character named rosie and she is walking a little june shepherd who has a lot of anxiety and um bear runs up to her and jumps on her and she starts laughing and having time of her life um they end up having like a conversation for at least an hour I want to say they hang out with the dogs they play in the creek they eat lunch together and there's like this instant connection between them um we find out that Rosie is volunteering at a shelter she wants to become a vet and they both have a crush on each other they're both really awkward it's lovely um so the following day he's like thinking about her and he's talking to his friends and his friends just is like just go up to her and say you want to have like a date or something so he goes back the following Saturday to the shelter to see if she wants to walk the dogs together and they do and they have a great time and then they actually say like they like each other and it's just so it's just a, a sweet cute romance book right now what we've got told is that she's a single parent and she lives with uh, roommates who help babysit but also help her try to get her foot out the door in the dating world and um her ex-man the baby's father is a trash bag um but adam comes along because she wasn't going to tell him or she didn't tell him about her son yet because the last time she told a date she had a son he ran out of basically ran out of the restaurant he made an excuse to leave and then she found him like three blocks over at a different bar but um she told him on their second on their third date their actual going out planning date and um he was okay with it and he's so good with kids he is so good with kids i'm going to probably make this man my book boyfriend um but he's just like trying to take care of her trying to take care of the kid having a blast the only problem is right now she knows he works in like an athletic setting but she doesn't know what his job is she doesn't know he's an actual famous um hockey player and it's a problem. I don't know if it's a problem yet, but it might be a problem. Um, the reason why he hasn't told her fully about his job description is because every time he goes out on a date, um, the women that he has been partnered with use him and want to use him for fame or want his money and all of that stuff. So that's why he's been distant and not like trying to tell her what his actual job title is because he's scared that if he says that he's famous or he has money that it's going to change her perspective of him and he is enjoying the freedom of just being a regular guy and not this NF NHL um, star and yeah that's where I'm at right now I'm enjoying it it's probably gonna be rated higher than the other two books he's gonna be my book boyfriend they're adorable their kid is their kid it's not really their kid their kid the kid what is the kid's name Connor? Connor keeps calling Adam Dada. And I'm like, cute. Even though you just met him. Um, he also volunteers at like a shelter. It's not a shelter. Mm, is it a shelter? It's like a facility with youth who have like troubled lives. And there's like this little girl named Lily who has trouble talking with men or doesn't like talking to men. But she hangs out with Adam and she made him a, fr a friendship bracelet. And I'm like, <laughs> so he wears it all the time. Um, but I'm having a great time. I... I'm currently on break so I'm going to read a little bit more and then I'm going to work and later today I'm going to the movies with my friends to watch A Haunting in Venice. Um, don't really know what it's about other than like a haunted place 
a creepy child and exorcism question mark there's just a whole lot of people in the movie so i'm excited i will give you an update when i have one okay so this is a weird angle but i'm reading this book and rosie's baby daddy needs to get fucking slapped i don't like him he is such a trash bag like oh my god the disrespect coming out of his mouth from a lazy piece of shit he basically just called her a hoe and said she looked like shit are you serious you little broke down rat like ugh i'm upset i'm upset i'm upset i need adam to come in and beat his ass that's what i need that's what i want um other than that adam's friends are adorable they basically went to the pet shelter put on fake mustaches and um <laughs> basically went to go check out rosie just to like see her i guess but then they had to play it cool and they were like, oh, I'm going to go look at cats. And then they fell in love with cats. But also, they accidentally called her by her name and she didn't say what it was. So they ran out because they got scared. Other than that, having a good time. It's a good book. Okay, so I finished Unravel Me. I'll put up a cover here. I'm giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. And it's a found family trope. It's very cute. And Adam is my new book boyfriend, okay? Love him. Also his ex-girlfriend and rosie's baby daddy suck hate them with all my heart all of it hates them um i do want to say it's so good it's so good <laughs> um what should i tell you about it it's a very heartwarming a very it's a heartwarming story it's found family it talks about foster care it talks about loving yourself it talks about how to get over insecurities it shows the importance of what family may look like to others and i cried i cried a lot i cried at like scenes where rosie felt like she found her place in the world and she found a family i cried because she is a vet like she works at the vet and there's this just to let you know there's a scene where like a dog has to go to surgery and he does not make it and i cried um there's a scene where lily um just to give you a heads up because i butchered the last talking of lily um lily is currently in the foster care system and like there's a group home setting um and adam has a charity for people in foster care um because he used to be in foster care but all the sections with her are so freaking adorable. I love it. 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 And it's a happily ever after story. Like, listen, I wouldn't mind rereading this book. It's so good. Um, so I do recommend it. I recommend. I recommend. So it's four to five stars. I am currently halfway through Caught Up, which is a sports romance, single father romance, and it's told in two perspectives. It's told by Kai's perspective, who is um, a baseball player who is very talented, and he just received, not, I don't want to say it like that, I don't actually know how to say it. Basically. He had sex with someone, they had his kid without him knowing, and six months later she shows up to his doorstep and says, this is your kid, I don't want to be a mom, and she leaves. And Kai takes that responsibility to heart, like he wants to quit baseball that day so he could be the support system for his son Max. Um, but because he's so talented, his coach, his team, his agency is like, we'll make all the accommodations for you to make sure that you could still have your son in your presence and watch him grow up. Um, so they like accommodate finding nannies, um, fixing up the plane so there's room in a crib on the plane for him and his son, um, and like giving him like hotel needs and anything he needs to make sure he feels comfortable enough to become this parent to his, uh, to his son Max. And his coach and his teammates are the greatest network support system that you could ever have. They are there to make sure that his son Max feels the love of all of them. Unfortunately, Kai is very, I wouldn't say, I don't want to say he's overprotective. He's protective of his son, but 
he has been firing a lot of nannies. It doesn't matter if it's a girl or a guy. In his mindset, he's like, I am want to retire today because he wants to make sure he's there for his son fully. Um, but enters the second person who is Miller. She is the coach's daughter. Kai thought she was a teenager because the coach never talks about her, but she's um, in her mid-20s. And she is the life of the party, easy, outgoing, down to earth. Um, and she's all about fun, but she is also about, I want to say, I don't want to call it running away, but it's basically running away on the move. Um, right now, she is stuck in a rut. She is a pastry chef who goes to other restaurants to help them create a dessert menu so they could earn a Michelin stars. But she is burnt out. She is burning all of her food and she doesn't know what is wrong. So she is taking a break from her job to go hang out with her father. And her father's like, you're going to babysit um, Max. So they make an arrangement and Kai and Miller have like tension. It's the tension where like, I find you annoying, but I also find you attractive. Um, they have cute banter and it's just a good time because them together, they balance each other. So they both made promises to each other. So Miller's promise to Kai is that she will make sure that he finds um, the fun in life again, that he finds a work-life balance where he feels fulfilled in being in his son's life and being a baseball player because Kai loves both of those things, but he is willing to leave baseball to be with his son full time. And then Kai's promise to Miller is that he will help her find inspiration to make pastries and figure out how to make her happy again in her job. And they become very vulnerable with each other even though there's like cute banter and the problem they are facing is they find each other attractive. They want to be with each other physically but Miller is leaving in two months and she does no strings attached and she's gonna leave. And um, Kai is someone who wants to stay grounded and gets attached easily. So it's kind of cute. I'm having the time of my life and I'm halfway through. I got the book yesterday. I plan on finishing it today, probably later after work. Um, but I'll give you another update when I have one. So I started a new book last night. I'm about to cry. I'm only, I'm almost done with it. I'm 87% in the book and it's at like a heartwarming sad part right now. But basically it's a single parent romance and it's, it's like romance and suspense and mystery. Because basically it's this girl who had to change her name to Aspen and she's taking care of her daughter, her daughter. And um, she had to change her identity because this man was harmful to her and her family and she moved to this small town it's five years later and she now takes care of her daughter and also um takes in animals that have been harmed or can't like function inside the wilderness um so one day in her area she sees this young deer that has like barbed wires around its leg so she calls somebody to help them and it's this man named Rowan who shows up and he's a bit grumpy but he's kind and sensitive towards animals but doesn't really get along with people um and they form a connection based off of like the friends that she has but she's keeping a dark secret and he's also keeping a dark secret but because they both have like similar traumatic past experiences um he feels very protective of her and her daughter and it's just so sweet this book is so good it's so good i got it simply because um i'm reading it on kindle limited but i got it because <laughs> kindle limited has these things where they're like challenges and one of the challenges is like read one of the bestsellers and this was on the bestsellers list but the cover's so ugly I must just say it the cover is not cute and the cover doesn't give off the vibe of the story um so it's a small town it's a mystery because it's 
you trying to figure out everyone's past and what they're hiding but also there's like a serial killer on the loose um and it's entertaining and it's heartfelt and there's some cute moments and I love the interactions between Rowan and the daughter Katie and they're just so cute like one of my favorite scenes I'm gonna be honest is when uh, Katie's five years old and she has like these three girls at school who bully her a lot but she has a best friend and named Charlie and basically they love each other so much they're talking about they're gonna get married when they're older but she goes to ballet one day and these girls are in her class and they were talking mess about her clothes because her mother is a single mom who is not rich so it takes a while for her to get like newer clothes so they were talking shit about her clothes and she came home one day and Rowan was on the couch and she ran up to him crying and he was asking her what was wrong and she was telling him and then he was like I'll take you to your dance class the next day and um he basically glared at the little girls so they'd stop talking shit about his girl um it's so cute but I'm about to cry again so <laughs> I'm going to finish this book and let you know when I'm reading it Okay, I just finished the book. I don't even know if I told you the name. It's called Shadows of You and it's part of the Lost and Found series. This is book four. Did I read any other books in the series? No. Am I now going to? Yes. So I gave this book a four stars. Okay, these characters, I just want to hug. Everyone is so precious and kind, minus the little bullies. Um, but other than that, I love the characters. The twist didn't see coming and I think I wished it was a little bit longer and a little bit more intense, but I liked everything in this book. So a four stars. I'm excited for the next one of the series because it's one of um, Rowan's brothers who is a single father. He has three boys and he is like the sheriff of the town, but he he needs someone to help watch him. So it's going to be a single father nanny romance. And yes, I like this book. I like this book a lot. I like it a lot. I also want a book of Aspen's daughter Katie because the epilogue is like 12 years later and Katie's 18 and she's so precious. I love her. Her and Rowan's relationship as father-daughter is so... it warms my heart. Um, but I want to know if she's still best friends with Charlie and if they still love each other. I'll do this right because they're they're like five saying they're gonna get married so I'm curious to know if they're still in that state of mind also she just got accepted to a good ballerina academy in like New York or something so I'm excited for her and I'm gonna read more from this author I'm probably gonna read the series just to see what's happening um but I, re I recommend I recommend this book read it um I don't know what I'm going to read next. I'll probably do one more book and then end the vlog. But I'm having a good time here, okay? Okay. Uh, I'll see you when I see you. I started reading another um, single parent romance. It's called P.S. You're Intolerable by Julia Wolf. It looks like this. And you know what? I'm having a good time. Um, I'm almost done with it. I started it earlier this morning. I'm almost done with it. Basically, we follow around two perspectives. We follow around Catherine. I believe that's her name, Catherine, who goes by Kit, and she ends up getting pregnant off of a one night with one of her coworkers, and they decide not to be together, but basically to still be like friends, and he convinces her that they should do a job of flipping a house. So she ends up buying this house, and the goal is to buy it, fix it up, flip it for, money, for more money, and he was still going to be there at the house helping her out. And he was getting all the contractors and stuff. Um, and then she got uh, an interview for a different job. And she's three months pregnant now. And the dude, he seems okay. But he also seems, like, sketchy. Like, he's not fixing anything. And I don't think he actually works. Um, but his name is Liam, I think. And Liam's Australian. And then once she gets her job at her new place, um, he basically says oh hey i have to go back to australia to go help out my father real quick but i'll be back while she's three months pregnant um spoiler alert he never comes back and he basically is like hey um just to let you know i also found somebody else and then 
the people they hired to fix the house, she gave him the money and he didn't give the contractors all of the money. So now the house is half ass fixed and the contractors came back and were like, well, we're taking back our materials since you haven't paid us. So now it looks like she's living in an abandoned place. And during her maternity leave, um, her boss shows up, whose name is Elliot. And he is supposed to be like this cold hearted man who is intolerable. Um, but he shows up to her place and is like, you're not staying here. You're going to stay with me. But he, honestly, I don't feel like he's a tolerable. I just think he likes his distance from people. One of the things I think that is cute is that she's his assistant. And he's the type of person who likes his agendas or scheduling handwritten. So when she hands write everything, at the end of it, she'll cut off a piece and be like, P.S., you irritated me today or something, right? Because she doesn't want to say that to his face. So she writes down all these notes and hides them in her drawer. And he finds them in her drawer and he just thinks it's funny. But they're cute. They're cute together. Her and Elliot are cute together. And the baby's adorable. He's very much of a, a caretaker. Like he is the type of person, his love language is giving. So like he's brought her into her home. He has fed her. Like he literally would hold her baby. Her, her baby's name is Julia, I think. Or no, Josephina. Um, so he'll hold the baby Josephina and then he'll be like, you need to eat dinner because you haven't ate. So he'll just like give her whatever he wants. He's bought her hella clothes and she's like, you don't need to do that. Um, but he likes providing. He likes being the provider. He likes taking care of her. And during this time, they're building up a friendship and then eventually a relationship. Um, and so far it's good. I'm currently, I think... I'm literally almost done. I think I have like a few more pages left. I'm on chapter 33. Yeah, I'm on chapter 33. I'm interested to know if there's going to be like a second act of breakup. Only because this couple is a very mature. As in, I'm used to reading books where there's like a huge miscommunication trope. And no, this couple is very honest with each other like no holds back or nothing so I appreciate it about them but I'm also like wondering what's gonna go wrong so that's where I'm at um and I'll give you an update when I finish okay it's later in the night I have a ring light on so it's kind of bright so if I wanted to make it darker I could because I'll maybe I'll do it here because it's the light's not in my eyes I'm tired now. I finished the book. I did. And honestly, I'm going to give it a three stars. I'm giving it a three stars. I can't see my hand. A three star. Simply because it was okay. It wasn't like the best book. It wasn't the worst book. Um, what I liked is the relationship. I thought the characters were very mature. Also, there's not really a miscommunication trope. I really hate that trope everybody was able to express how they felt super fast and I think that's one of the reasons why it's a three stars because there are some scenes that are supposed to be like intense right especially the ending but because the scenes felt fast um I didn't feel that like intensity I didn't feel scared for any of the characters um and I think that's the only thing about the book also I don't really care for the sex scenes um they were just okay I do I think what I enjoyed more was like the little cute moments between the three of them as a family or when Elliot would do something nice out of nowhere or honestly how supportive um everybody is in the book like I don't really think I hated any characters I think the only character I didn't like because he was trash is Liam who is the baby daddy but um, Kit's friends, so supportive of her, and um, Elliot's family is very supportive of him, and they all have, like, great communication styles, they're all there for each other, and I'm here for it. Honestly, I'm really here for it. I don't know if I want to read um, any other characters' books. I might read the next one that's supposed to be coming out this year sometime in spring. It's in 
who's who's new it's gonna be with one of the characters named miles who is very golden retriever in kind um but his love interest is supposed to be grumpy so i'm excited am i excited for that i'm curious about it um but i'm tired i'm ready to go to sleep so i'm gonna do that and i'll talk to you later Thank you.